There we go. <clears throat> I think everybody should be able. Barry, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see that and hear that? Okay, just give me a thumbs up if you can see it on the screen. Everything's uh, great. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, the today, uh, <clears throat> this is a, a presentation I've given a number of times, but I reworked it this week. So they're mostly new slides uh, to update the um, 5G technology presentation. My advice to everyone is this. Um, I would recommend you have a paper and pencil there. And as we go through, the, there's a lot of material we're going to go through today. And uh, if you have any questions, write them down. Uh, rather than interrupt through the, through the presentation, I'd like to deal with the questions at the end of the, end of the show. And then I can stick around all, uh, all morning. It really doesn't matter to me. Um, but I think that uh, uh, I'd like to just get through all the material right now. Uh, and then we, we'll leave the questions till the very end. Uh, so the, the title of the presentation is What Will 5G Mean to You? Um, but really there's three things I think you're all wanting to find out about. And the first one is, should I consider buying a 5G phone in February of 2021? I think that's probably why most of you are listening to this presentation. You're wondering what the heck am I gonna do? The second thing you're all probably wondering is what is the best 5G network? And you're all going to, you're all, all trying to figure out that one. And the third thing you may or may not be aware of is what is the difference between mobile 5G and fixed 5G, fixed base 5G? What's the difference between the mobile and fixed base? And, and if you don't know the answer to that, you should, uh, you should for sure, um, uh, we will learn that today. So those are three essential questions that I hope I can answer at the end of the presentation. And if I don't answer them to your satisfaction, please, please call me out on that in the question and answer, and we'll discuss that. So those are three important uh, questions I thought you would want to know. Now, um, if you look at this slide, this is of October of 2020. This is uh, worldwide implementation of 5G networks. And I thought it was interesting to show you this. Um, just to let you know, the green are, are countries that um, are, are planning 5G. The dark blue are countries that uh, are in development of 5G. So this would be certainly Canada and the United States, you're seeing 5G implemented. Uh, the light blue, of course, mostly is China, and that is, uh, this is countries that are indeed running 5G and have been running it for quite some time. So while we're in the phases, a lot of countries are in the phases of starting 5G or planning 5G, uh, and, and we are sort of in the, you know, starting to implement 5G, uh, China indeed has been doing it for four or five years. And in fact, uh, last year, China announced their plans to implement and move on to 6G. So you're going to think, oh my gosh, what's all this about? But just to let you know, on a global basis, that's where uh, that's where this technology is. Now uh, we're going to go over a bit of the history of cellular technology, and uh, this is, of course, my favorite picture and my favorite television show. This, of course, is you all. Now they're all seniors, so you all should know this picture. This, of course, is Don Johnson from Miami Vice. But what is Don Johnson holding? He's holding a cell phone. This was the one of the first cell phones uh, to be manufactured. This was a big issue on this particular version of uh, Miami Vice. And this was 1G or analog technology. This was the very first te technology we had. And I thought that was, that's so cool, but that's, that's Don Johnson uh, in uh, Miami Vice with the one of the very first uh, cell phones. Now, as you may or may not remember, but in uh, in 1982, uh, the U.S. regulatory uh, bodies broke up Ma Bell, and Ma Bell, um, uh, and they and they distributed the customers out uh, across the United States to different companies. So this occurred in 1982. And what happened was there was a little unknown company uh, in the Seattle area called Verizon. And Verizon got uh, about um, 
200,000 customers and the regulatory body gave them those customers and said, go forth and multiply. Well, Verizon, of course, was just a small little company at that time. And I would have liked to be a uh, fly on the, in the boardroom to listen to what they were saying. But, uh, but if I had been, they would have said they plans to become a national service and, and of course spread across the United States, which they did. Now, the thing that you need to know about here is that uh, in the planning stages, because we were only at 1G back in the 1980s, all right, this was analog. May, some of you who had the early cell phones probably remember getting other calls on the same line. It was like a party line. You often got mixed up calls. That's before 2G when we went to digital. Now, what happened in, with Verizon is uh, it, back in the planning stages of their national network is they decided to go with a network standard called CDMA. Now, you're, you, don't need to know, you don't need to know anything about that, but CDMA is a network standard. The rest of the world and the rest of the country all went with what we call GSM, different networking standard. Now, I like giving this talk to seniors because you remember beta and VHS, right? Um, if I talk to people now, young people, they have no idea what I'm talking about, a Betamax and a VHS. So you all remember, um, I did my research, I'm sure you did, and we all, a lot of us chose Betamax, right? We chose beta because we thought it was better technology. Well, what happened to beta, of course, it went away and the standard became VHS. And this pretty much is the same thing that happened uh, with CDMA. Verizon chose CDMA as a networking standard and built their network in the United States uh, their 3G network, 2G and 3G network on the CDMA standard, whereas, uh, and also um, uh, there was one other company that used CDMA, but but the uh, rest all used, uh, uh, all used GSM. Now, <clears throat> why should you need to know that? Well, if you remember uh, in the, uh, you know, in the, uh, the late 90s and uh, in the, in, in, in around the year 2000, as we went through life, this is the time and period of time when people um, had, when you bought a Verizon phone, it would only work on the Verizon network. And when you bought a um, T-Mobile phone or you bought an AT&T phone, it would only work on the AT&T networks, all right? And this was, this, and of course, remember the other thing is we all got free phones. Or, well, I guess they're not free, but don't you remember, you know, you would have your phone for a couple of years and then you'd get a new one and a new plan and then they'd give you another one. And we went on and on flipping phones like this for about 10 or 12 years. And these were uh, as, as the 3G networks were being built. But remember, half the networks or Verizon networks were all CDMA and wouldn't work. So your phone's on a Verizon phone wouldn't work on a GSM network. So this is where we were. And then the big announcement came, uh, the big announcement came about 15 years ago and, uh, and a company called Apple brought out the first smartphone. And this changed, changed the concepts because it quickly became apparent that we required a, a lot more um, network capability to run these smartphones. And this is when the networks all started to change and we went from the 3G technology to what we have today, which is the 4G technology. Now, the greatest thing about the 4G technology was we didn't have the CDMA or GSM anymore. All these, this all went away. All the towers got changed in the United States and we all have now, it's utopia, well, it is utopia now, but we're going to 5G, which just adds a lot of complexity to it. But 4G, everything works. There are, there is only 4G towers. There is no 3G, it's all 4G, it all works. It's all synchronous, it all works on all the carriers. Everything is, there is no compatibility issue, compatibility issue with 4G. So 4G is what the standard is right now, and it's what we're using. Uh, and now we're moving into the 5G, and that's where we are. And that's a bit of the history of it and where we're going. Now, uh, this, uh, if you look at this, there are many things. This is really a roadmap over the next 10 years. 
Uh, you're going to see tremendous changes in the transport, well, changes in the way communication is delivered in the next 10 years. And so this is a roadmap over the next 10 years. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, there are many features of um, 5G that will change the way we do things. Probably the ones that everyone is going to think about right now is autonomous driving cars. But, uh, but from whether it's healthcare, manufacturing, um, construction, uh, movie making, all these things will, of course, be uh, affected by 5G as the speed increases. Um, again, these are the top five benefits, particularly in the uh, automobile industry that, um, uh, that 5G will be helping us with. Now, I don't know, my favorite program I listen to all every morning, I listen to it again, was, uh, uh, was Leo Laporte's uh, show. I always listen to him every day. And they, there's a fellow on who's a techie guy who does uh, home theater, and he sort of grew it. His name's Scott Wilkinson. And Scott was talking about 5G, particularly to a conference he was at last year. Now, many of you um, know how movies are made, right? You, you know that the director, uh, there's a director, there's an actor, and then there's film editors. So you, you probably all understand that um, how this works, but what happens is, is, is you have a movie set, you have a director, and you have actors. So the director will say, take one, and they do a scene, and the actors perform, and then, you know, then they do a second scene, and you know, that's how that all works. And then, it, then the scenes go, the physical film goes by canister to the uh, film editing room. And at the end of the production that's edited and comes out with a film. 5G technology has changed all this. And in fact, how they're gonna do this now is um, as the film is being recorded, it is actually going to the film editors by 5G technology. And the editors are actually editing the film before the scene is completed. So you can imagine how the technology of even making movies is going to change with this. So pretty exciting. Again, you're going to see, um, as you know, uh, cable services uh, probably will go away within the next few years, and we won't be seeing that. You're already seeing the demise of that now with the uh, cord cutting that's occurring and the uh, all the cable companies are struggling to survive. And again, the satellite system, whether it's dish networks or um, or AT&T's DirecTV, these are both up for sale. AT&T wants to desperately get rid of DirecTV and this is, uh, this is definitely on the way out. Um, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So how, how, faster, how much faster is 5G? Well, if you look at this diagram, you will see if we take a, uh, uh, a movie. This is uh, this is the movie called Guardian of the Galaxy, and it's about a two-hour-long movie. In 3G technology, to download that movie would take 26 hours. Uh, in 4G technology, to download that movie would be six minutes. Uh, with 5G technology, it would be 3.6 seconds. All right. So um, so 26 hours compared to 3.6 seconds definitely is faster. Now, you're all going to say to me, well, Ron, this doesn't make sense. I mean, how much faster can I get my email? How much faster can I do certain things on my computer? They're already pretty darn fast. So why would I want 5G? What, what, is, what is 5G? Why do we need to have such fast, fast speeds? Well, the issue with the speed is not so much the speed, it's the latency. And the latency is extremely low as we get faster speeds. And we need the latency for a variety of reasons. First of all, for autonomous driving cars. If you see autonomous driving cars driving down the road, like you see here, um, we need, when, when so the car ahead stops, we want to make sure the car behind stops right away. There can't be any latency or hesitancy, right? And whether this is a manufacturing process, whether this is a crane operator or a physician or a resurgeon doing remote surgery on a brain, um, the latency needs to be really, really low. And with very fast speeds, 
we can create low latency. Now, if you look at where we are today and you look on the left side of this slide, you'll see that these are our current technologies, what we have and their speeds. Uh, if we're looking at um, DSL, which of course is very old technology, the maximum speed you're gonna get out of that is about hundred megabits. Of course, everyone's looking at the new Starlink technology, which of course Elon Musk has, and uh, this is coming online. And, and it's, uh, it's about 300 megabits, maybe a little faster, maybe a little slower. Cable, um, cable services have really cranked up their systems lately. I just got on my cable system, got a gigabit service. So the maximum they're offering now is about a thousand megabits. Uh, LTE 4G now, uh, the, the maximum theoretical capability is 1500 megabits. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Fiber optic uh, is about two gigabytes as maximum. And 5G, once we get into the, um, the uh, high band 5G, which we'll talk about, particularly the, uh, the new waveforms, the um, millimeter wave, you can start at about 5,000 or five gigabyte and up, right? So it's, that's, 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 this is where we are with speed. Now, the other thing that's really good and the thing that you should be aware of that's so cool is this is the um, Verizon Tower outside my resort uh, in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, and the existing 4G infrastructure is getting a lot faster. So before you run off and get a 5G phone or you wanna get fast, let me just tell you about this. Uh, in 2017 on this tower, I measured the tower as 30 megabits was the maximum I could get with download. And the congestion, when the congestion was there, was about five megabits. Uh, 2019, it went up to a same tower, same everything. It went to 180 megabits and with network congestion got about 130. So a huge difference in uh, network speed on a 4G network in a tower right outside my resort. So. The, all the companies, one of the benefits we're seeing of 5G isn't, isn't so much 5G, it's the, it's the added value or the, or the faster speeds of 4G. The, the 4G is really great. It's super fast in a lot of cases and is giving you some really great speeds. So just be aware of that. Now, um, does anyone know what a million times a million is? Uh, well, it happens to be a trillion dollars. So, so that's a lot of money. Uh, I don't have a trillion dollars, uh, but uh, there are a million cell towers in the United States. Um, the cost of converting each cell tower to a 5G tower is about a million dollars. So a million times a million is a trillion. So that's a lot of money and is going to occur over a very long period of time. So what we're seeing now with the networks, 5G networks we have, is they're using existing 4G towers until we actually can convert all the towers into 5G. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what that entails uh, as, we, as we move along in the presentation. Uh, all right, let's talk a little bit about um, 5, 5G now. Um, and this will be a little more apparent, but I want to bring um, talk about what what a millimeter wave is. And a millimeter wave is a type of technology that Verizon is using to create their ultra fast 5G uh, network. And we'll talk about how all this works in a minute. But I wanted just to explain what 5G. This is the millimeter wave. This is the five gigabit download. This is the extremely fast. And Verizon is using the millimeter wave to do this. And this is only in really small segments of the United States. To, and this is where you get the ultra fast high speed networks. And there are four, um, there are really four um, ways in which this beam occurs. These are called millimeter waves, very high frequency waves. And there are four different types of technology involved. There's small smell, small cell, massive MIMO beam forming and full duplex. And we'll talk a little bit about what that means. Okay, <clears throat> the millimeter wave is this, and we'll talk about this a bit later, but if you look at frequency and bandwidth, you'll find out a couple of things. Um, the sweet spot is really in the low frequencies, 
because the 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 um, the, the frequencies that the waves go very far, they go through buildings, they go through glass. Uh, but the limiting factor of the lower frequency waves are we just don't have enough of them. As we get into the very high frequencies, which we're going to use in the millimeter waves, they don't do much. They don't go through glass. They don't go through buildings. Uh, the weather affects them. There are all sorts of problems with these very high frequency waves. But they're fast and we can make a heck of a lot of them, okay? So that's, that's, that's the advantage and that's what the millimeter wave is. These are very, very high frequency. Uh, 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 high, there's a very high frequency and that's what the millimeter wave is. And again, if you're looking at um, the, the wavelength of 3G and 4G, you're looking at one to two gigahertz uh, but with 5G, we're looking up in the 70 gigahertz. So it's a very high frequency. Okay. Well, we'll pass that. So <clears throat> what is small cell? Um, what is small cell technology? Well, small cell is what you'll have ultimately in your neighborhood. Uh, these are because it's a very high frequency and the waves are the very high frequency and the waves don't go very far. You'll need a tower on each um each light post in your uh, in your in your development or area you live. Um, this would be like for a residential area that has uh, light standards like this, and you'll see the uh, you'll see the the um, uh, you'll see the uh, antennas here, uh, and and you would need one of these for about every ten homes. And the reason again is is these these high frequency uh, signals don't go very far. They don't penetrate into homes. They don't penetrate through glass. And certainly if you were standing on one side of your house, you wouldn't get a signal on the other side unless you went around to the other side and it, you had a uh, signal coming from the other. So, so in this example here, you'll see that there are all sorts of these antennas in your area. They're all on these, um, these lamp standards and they're all broadcasting these uh, these wave waveforms, these millimeter waves, and that's how your phone is getting them and, and transmitting them. <clears throat> okay, so the next issue is that's all fine in residential area, but what happens if we get into more congested areas? What are you going to do? And this is uh, where we have the massive, the MIMO, which this is multiple input, multiple output. And this is where you have uh, a lot bigger antennas and you have a lot more of these millimeter waves being made and it's going into larger, larger density populated area. And it would look something, now, if you wanna see this, uh, for those of you who live in Mesa, um, if you look and you go down, uh, we have a highway right by our, um, our, our resort and it's, uh, it's called, uh, it's right on the, um, it's Highway 60. If you go down Highway 60 and you look on the right side, the north side at the exits, you'll see that all these massive BMO uh, antennas are already in place as this will be a major transportation corridor as we move, uh, move ahead. Now, the problem with the massive MIMO signals is this is what it would look like. It looks like, like a crazy amount of signals that are all going all over the place and it looks absolutely chaotic because there's no control of this. So we need actually a control system to control all these different signals, all right? And that's uh, why we have the next type of technology called adaptive beam switching. You don't need to know all this, but it's just, it's just interesting. And so adaptive beam switching is like an air traffic controller at an airport, and it helps control all these waves and keep some sense of them. So this is a, a second, and these are the antennas that would be uh, also in the area and they would be controlling and allowing and looking after all these crazy waves that are going all over all over the place. It, it sort of controls these. Now, the other thing that's, uh, that happened is this. If Barry has a, a walkie talkie and I have a walkie talkie uh, and we wanna talk, uh, if Barry wants to call me, he, he pushes the button and says, hey, Ron, what's up? And then when I want to call Barry back on a walkie-talkie, I, I click this, the, the signal and um, I click the button and I can say, hey, Barry, I'm here. Now, what happens if we both click the button? What happens if we both hold the button down? 
Well, it squeals, right? And that's because you can't have two-way transportation, two-way signal on that radio wave, it won't work, all right? Now, you're gonna say, well, how does cell phone work? Well, in fact, your cell phone actually uses two signals. There's a signal to transmit and a signal to receive. It's not duplex, it's actually doing, so, so your cell phone on your recall you make, there's actually two signals being used. Uh, 5G technology, they're able now to have full duplexing on that signal. So for example, um, this is the, um, this is the, the, the way that the, it would work with a walkie talkie, but with a full duplex in, um, in this technology, you get uh, the trains, of course, uh, are on the same track. So this all makes it extremely fast. So those are the technologies uh, that, that we have. And that is, that's the millimeter wave technology. And you will find that now in certain areas. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And this is what makes it so fast. It's these aerials, this millimeter wave, this very high frequency, this makes it extremely fast. And, and, and that's how we can get these really incredibly fast speeds. And again, uh, this gives you just a signal of, of where we are and where we're going with the, uh, with the 5G. Now, again, uh, if you look at this diagram, uh, again, this is building penetration. And you'll see that obviously there's some problems here because uh, with 3G and 4G, we, we have no trouble. We can get into the buildings, we can, we can go and we can uh, do all what we want and we still get our cell phones in our, in our buildings. But of course, as, as the frequency goes up, so does the difficulty in getting those signals into buildings. Um, now, one of the things that you do need, what I just talked about is just interesting stuff to explain how the very fast 5G works is with the, in Verizon's case, it's with the millimeter wave. A lot of the other companies can build other technologies that will do that. So that's just the millimeter wave Verizon's doing. But one of the things that is really important that you understand is called dynamic spectrum sharing. And, and why is this so important? Dynamic spectrum sharing is, is, is the ability of your cell phone to be able to switch between the different 5G networks and 4G. And it is so important that, 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 that your phone has this feature. And this is not a software feature, this is actually built into the chip on the cell phone. And one of the big problems we had uh, and, and early on, because 5G phones have been out now for I think about two years, the early 5G phones did not have this. In other words, you couldn't switch between the 5G and 4G networks, or you couldn't switch between the uh, low, mid, and high band, which we're going to talk about in a minute, in the, uh, in the cell phones, uh, in the low, medium, and high bands with 5G. So those people who bought 5G phones over the last couple of years, if they do not have this feature on the chip, uh, and it's just recently that this feature has been added, uh, it, is, it is a big problem and, and you're not gonna get, you're not gonna be very happy with your phone. But the newer phones as we move forward will all have this. So if you are considering buying a phone and somebody is going to give you an older 5G phone or you give you a really great deal on it. You have to be really careful about that. You want to make sure that your phone has dynamic spectrum sharing. Now, the common films like the new Samsung S21 and the new iPhone will all have this built into it. Common phones like that would have this already built into it, but you want to make sure that your phone has this in the phone. All right, now there's three flavors of... Uh, of, of 5G. There's uh, the what we call the low band, the mid band, and the high band. And you really sort of need to know this. Uh, you don't need to know um, a huge amount about this, but, but you need to know that what we talked about with the millimeter wave is called the high band. And this is the, the really high frequencies. Uh, there, are, there are mid bands. Uh, which uh, are the mid-range frequencies. 
and there are the low bands, which are the low band frequencies. And we'll talk a little bit about this in a minute. And if you look at how this looks at, this is sort of another pick, uh, uh, pick look at this. And so all the uh, 5G companies, all the cell companies that are uh, that are, are touting their 5G program, uh, all are doing the same thing. The high band in the most is this this here at the very fast would be of course your millimeter wave, uh, and this is very limited uh, in in application because of the cost. And you saw it was just very expensive to 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 put all those aerials up. But the most common band is in the mid band, and this is, um, um, and, and all the companies now are purchasing and trying to get um, uh, more bandwidth in the mid band range to run their 5G networks. And the low band is, uh, is, the, um, is really just an exaggerated 4G network. And again, if you look at the uh, way in how this works, is if you look at the coverage, <clears throat> it, the lower the bandwidth, the, the, the more coverage you get, but the faster you go up, you get less coverage. And, and the same thing with bandwidth. Um, as you get to the lower bands, which you, they can go a long way, you don't have much bandwidth. In other words, you need lots of band. But if you get up into the millimeter wave, man, you've got a lot of data that you can move. The problem is you can't move it very far. And also the latency, it gets faster as we go up faster and we get into those millimeter waves, which are really, really fast waves. Of course, the latency goes way down. So this is how, this is how it all works. I wanted to just show you here, and you don't need to know this. Uh, I don't, you don't need to know all this diagram here, but these are just some of the bands in the low, mid and high band range. And I wanted you to look at, um, at this particular band here. If you see, um, and you don't need to know these numbers, but if you see the N261, N means of course new, and 261 is just a number, it's a band, and the frequency of that band is 28 gigahertz, okay? And so that's the frequency of the band. I want you just to watch this now. And this is the, um, this is the N261 band, that is this particular frequency. But the interesting thing to know is, is if you look worldwide, how they're distributing this out, this is the United States, and this is the frequency of which that band was gonna be used. But you can see in Europe, they have chosen for that band, it starts at the same, but look at this, it, it goes a lot down to 24 points, 24.25, you look at South Korea is different and you look at China is different as well. Now, what does that mean? What does all this mean with these different bands? Each country is using a different frequency set for these bands. So this is going to be extremely important that when you purchase a phone, that you purchase it for a made in the USA. When you purchase, cell phones, of course, are, are sold globally. They're sold all over the world. And on Amazon, you can buy lots of phones uh, that from all sorts of different places. And one of the things you must make sure as you move forward is that you make sure that when you purchase a phone, if you are gonna purchase it on Amazon, you make darn sure it's not an international phone and that it is a made in US because the chipset is gonna be different. The band, the, the ability of that phone to perform because of the different ways these different countries are, are putting these, the frequencies in these bands, you, it, they're gonna work differently. So that is really, a, that's a key thing that you need to know. Back in the 4G, when I used to give talks on how to purchase a smartphone, in, when we we're talking about 3G and 4G, it wasn't as important. And sometimes you could get a great deal on international phones. They were sometimes half the price and they would work pretty darn good. But this is not going to be the case in 5G. You must buy a phone on 5G that is built for the United States for that particular reason. And again, uh, this is a global snapshot of all the different bands and how they work. So you have to be careful with that. All right. Now, should you be worried about um, health risks for 5G? This is uh, a big issue because with all these towers going up, 
it is, um, it is, it is, you are going to get lots of people who think this causes cancer and is a bad thing. Uh, and as these uh, towers go up in your neighborhood, you're going to get lots of uh, concerns about this. Um, and so is 5G safe? And one of the problems is, is that when you look at, at buildings like this at the top and you look at all these aerials on this building here, people look up at this and say, oh my gosh, is this safe? We're going to be bombarded with radiation. Well, in fact, if you look at the uh, electromagnetic spectrum, you will see, of course, we have radio waves and these are the very low radio waves and these are the extremely high frequency radio waves. Um, and what really radio waves are divided into ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. And if you look at, of course, the ionizing radiation is the worrisome ones. And this is uh, where it displaces molecules and can damage the genetic makeup of your, uh, of your body. And of course, we all know about gamma rays. These are, these are rays that are created when a nuclear explosion occurs. And these are very deadly and will usually cause severe problems. Of course, we have X-rays. We use X-rays uh, radiation to actually treat cancer because we know that X-rays uh, can, can, can actually damage um, tissue and so on and so forth. Uh, you all know that ultraviolet light, of course, from the sun is, uh, is bad for you and causes skin cancer. Uh, and then, of course, we have the visible light spectrum. Now, moving down to non-ionizing radiation, this is harmless. It doesn't cause any harm. Um, and this is be the boat. Uh, we have microwaves in our homes and we have radio waves. And the 5G network sits somewhere between radio waves and microwaves in this very safe area here. Um, if you asked me... Um, if you ask me what I thought about um, brain cancer, uh, I have had so many people and so many friends of mine that have had brain cancer and died of that. I would have said to you that brain cancer is on the rise and that would definitely be due to cell phones. Um, and that's, that's what I would just tell you right now. But in fact, being a scientist and a bit of a researcher, if you look at the data, that is not the case. In fact, if you look at the incidence of brain cancer, it's actually going down. I think we're getting older and just more of our friends probably are having it, uh, but it is, it is actually going down. And if you look at all the regulatory bodies who have looked into this extensively, such as the CDC, FC, FDA, and the National Cancer Institute all have come out with the same conclusion. There is no harm whatsoever. Again, 5G and the Internet of Things will be able to do, and it's the low latency that, of course, uh, allows us to, uh, to, to have a lot of the devices that we have. Um, now, will you need a new phone to use 5G? Of course you will. <laughs> of course you will. Do you think, do you think you're going to be able to use 5G without buying a new phone? No. So yes, you will need a new phone. Um, the new phones, of course, are more expensive. Uh, a lot of that is to do with the technology of the phones. Uh, they need, uh, they, they actually 5G phones have four aerials in them. So they're more complicated to make. The other thing is they need more power. So the power drain on the phone is, is, is more substantial, they need bigger batteries. Uh, in the early 5G phones, this was problematic and they were very big, they were heavy, and we had to pack a lot more into them. But you'll find now that uh, they've really worked through that and we have uh, better technology. So you will need to use a 5G phone. The 5G phones will be backward compatible to 4G networks, so they will work on all the networks. Now, where it is going to be an issue, and we'll talk about this in a couple of minutes, is... Um, is the compatibility between each 5G network that's going to be implemented, whether it's AT&T, Verizon, and so on and so forth. That may be a problem. Uh, we talked about that. Now, one of the things that I'm going to recommend that you do is that uh, if in your purchase considerations of a new phone, I want you to make sure that you talk to your cell phone provider. Never. I always used to teach, and I taught many courses on how to purchase a cell phone. I always said, in my, my dogma was this, was, was to go and purchase your own phone, do your research, and then negotiate your deal 
with your provider and you would get a much better, um, much better deal. However, I'm gonna tell you that that's probably not the best approach when considering 5G. Uh, it's too complicated, the networks are too difficult. What you need to do is you need to talk to your local providers in the area you are, and you need to um, ask them and, and ask them a bunch of questions. And I'll tell you what the questions you need to ask and, and do your research through those providers. Uh, it's not within Europe, it's pretty difficult to, the towers and the technology are changing so fast that uh, it's not possible. And what's true today may not be true three months from now. So it's really important in your consideration of purchasing a new phone is that you talk to your pro local provider. Uh, who has the best service in your area? And again, this changes on a sometimes monthly basis as new towers get put up. There are thousands of thousands of towers being put up every day. And so this whole area is changing rapidly. Uh, the other issue will be compatibility with the different networks. And uh, this is not yet being worked out entirely. And so if you buy a Verizon phone and it's a 5G phone, will it work on all 5G networks? Uh, so you're going to have to look at compatibility issues, uh, which I think will be a big issue, and also travel requirements. For example, if you lived in um, Michigan and then maybe you did some uh, wintering down in Mesa, you would have travel requirements in both those areas. So you'd want to make sure that your phone worked in both those areas. So again, it's it, you really need to look at this carefully and, and talk to your uh, service providers on that. All right, now, um, one of the things, whether you get a 5G phone or not, um, I, I would say, first of all, remember at the beginning of this presentation, I told you one of the benefits of 5G has been the 4G and the speed of the 4G networks, which is pretty darn good. So you may, I'm not, you'll have to decide on your own if you think that 5G is a worthwhile project or not. Um, but, it, for sure, you should all be considering fixed base 5G. And let me explain what fixed base 5G is. Uh, and you all should actually be looking at this and purchasing fixed base 5G. And so what fixed base 5G is this? This is where um, the, you would of course have a tower, you would have an antenna on your house and the antenna from the tower is going to send the signal to the antenna on your house. Uh, there's then gonna be a coax cable that's gonna come from the antenna down into your house and you would have a 5G modem. Again, this would be provided by the internet service provider and you would have a modem. The modem would then plug into your network. And uh, this, is, this is how you would receive your services. Uh, this would be an example here in this picture of the um, of the uh, uh, this would be an example of the picture here, uh, and um, and this would be providing the uh, cell service down to your uh, down to your house. Now, let me just let me just continue on with this. This is actually an older slide. I'm going to tell you that Verizon actually has the fixed base 5G in most cities now. So um, what I would strongly encourage you to do is to, is to phone up in your area and find out and see if you have, uh, if it is available. Uh, now, AT&T, T-Mobile all have the same services. And as 5G spreads out across the United States, this is, uh, this is really where you wanna be. Um, the the, the fixed base 5G will provide phone service to your house. It will provide internet service and television service. You'll get the whole package. Sometimes they're offering this as introductory pricing for $50 a month. And you could get a two year introductory contract on this. It is so cheap and so good that it is crazy if you're not doing it. And this is where in 10 years time we'll all be. We'll all be on this type of technology. We won't have cable. We won't have all DSL. We won't have all the other stuff that you saw will all be using this technology. And it is available now and the companies are desperate to have you sign up. And so they're giving you a heck of a good deal. So um, I would certainly encourage you to do this. Again, you'll see, I'm gonna just play you. Um, 
I'm going to play you a, a little, I'm going to play you a little video now so that I can show you, uh, let me just get this. Where is my... This was going to be a, a big, big step in the digital world. It's the newest, it's the latest, greatest technology. It's so fast, it's easy, it's like lightning. 5G Home has been almost revolutionary from my previous provider. The installation was probably one of the easiest installations I've ever had. The speeds are exponentially quicker than what I've had prior with other services. Easy. It's painless. The streaming and downloading is almost faster than my computer can write to my hard disk. It's been perfect. I love it. Now I'm Verizon 5G Home person. was going to be all right uh i think that's what are we doing here 755 there you go almost exactly an hour i'm going to um stop my sharing and uh barry you can unmute yourself and i will um i will open it up to any questions you have so uh should you purchase a, a 5g phone depends on um it depends on the um really depends on the area you're in and what the what the um what the um in your local area what type of towers you have and what type of signals you have uh, uh sometimes there could be some benefit in that again you need to talk to your local local uh provider and find out what's in your area um should you use fixed base yes you should definitely get fixed base um and uh, so those are those are the answers to sort of some of your questions and and I'll um, any questions. Ron, Ron, I want to thank you for a great presentation. Um, one of the guys that's on Tech for Senior, his name is Dewey Cluse. Dewey, and yes. I rem and I remember listening to uh, the presentation, the Tech for Seniors, one of them, where he had mentioned that the ones that have the technology N77, uh, which is true 5G, is now existing in the iPhone 12 and the Ma iPhone 12 Max, I believe. Is that accurate? Yes, and that also comes into dynamic spectrum sharing as well because you want to have that. Yes, it, you know, if you're looking at, and that's one of the reasons that, um, that iPhone waited till this year to have 5G. You know, everyone thought it would be last year but they wanted to wait because they saw this coming down the road because as this technology changes, you, you really want to sort of be on the, um, you want to make sure it's going to be compatible with all those bands. So yes. And so you, you can be pretty sure again, you know, you want to, there's no point in buying a 5g phone if there's no 5g in your, well, there will be 5g in your area, but you have to look at what the signal is and maybe T-Mobile is better for your area than Verizon or AT&T is better. You really have to look at your network areas and look at, see what's happening. Uh, that's the important takeaway message from that. Okay. Anybody have any questions just unmute yourselves and, or use the chat box. Dorothy, go ahead. Um, our condo has a contract with um, Comcast for two years. So I think we're kind of locked in um, and there's no way that we can change it. And so whatever we have, we have, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and it will be, um, and this obviously will be, uh, particularly for condos, um, I would expect probably that ultimately there will be a, you wouldn't in a condo situation you wouldn't want people if you had 100 people in your condo units you wouldn't want them all having aerials hanging out the 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 uh you know the balcony off the balcony getting your 5g signal so i suspect that the companies will have you know a 5g aerial on the con roof of the condo and then that will feed down into your um uh, into your units. And again, you can use existing wiring that's built into the buildings. There's no particular unique aspect of that, uh, but it will, um, but you'd have sort of an aerial on your roof. And instead of coming in by cable, it would, you would get it as a satellite or as a, as a 5G signal. I see. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> if we're trying to cut the cord 
with the cable companies, which I would love to do, then how do I get my internet? Oh, well, that's a good question. Um, and that's a very good question. Uh, so if you are cutting the cord, then you have some options that you uh, that you uh, can do. And, and of course, 5G is one of them, the fixed space, because of course, you're then going to be getting it uh, wirelessly. I will tell you, you can cut the cord all you want, uh, but if you're trying to save money, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, in fact, um, it, it, you know, if you can do, uh, it, it's just not, what most people find when they cut the cord and then they get a hotspot or they get their internet service, you have to have internet service, right? If you want the services, somehow you have to get the signal. Now you could right. use it over the air, you know, you can certainly put aerials and you can get your signal over the air, but that won't give you internet, right? No, so, right. you know, the only way you're going to get internet is you've got to be hooked up to something. And right. once you start doing that and adding the services back in, in fact, you're, you, it, people have done studies on this umpteen dozen studies, it's all the same. You won't really save that much money. Now, in fact, with all this new technology coming along and all these new cell towers and everything, it's all going to cost more money. So all as I can say is, is it's going to need a change in mindset because there's no doubt that these services will cost more. And, and that's just life. You know, a cost is going to definitely go up. So trying to cut the cord is, is a good idea. I think cable companies are, I don't like cable companies. I think, I think their programming sucks. Uh, I think I hate all the commercials. I hate all that stuff. So I, I watch very little cable. I do have cable. The, I do use cable to have my internet services delivered, partly, partly because the area I'm in, I actually have DSL. I have fiber optic coming right to my house as well. I could do fiber optic as well, but I've stuck with the cable companies because they've, you know, they've, I've got a, a gigabyte service now coming in, uh, which is pretty darn good. And that's the other thing I would mention to everybody is this, there's intense competition out there with this fixed base 5G. So the cable companies are all, um, are all upping the ante. And you'll find that Cox, particularly down in our area in Mesa, Cox Cable is now offering a terabyte, a gigabyte service as well. And the gigabyte service was only like $10 more a month to, to, get, a, to, to, to get some pretty, pretty incredible speeds. Now you may not need that, but it is, it is but, but if you do have a cable company, my advice would be to make sure you talk to them. You know, if you haven't talked to them in a couple of years and you've got this old plan that you've been had forever, because uh, they're all, they're all really squeaking now to make to keep you as a customer, and you, you can make some pretty good deals. Uh, but for sure, if you want to cut the cord with the cable company, then then I would look at right now the fixed base five G. With uh, if Verizon's in your area, see if fix, uh, Verizon has that in that service because you will get a a unbelievable deal, and for fifty dollars you will be getting. Um, uh, which they're offering, you will be getting uh, your phone, your internet, uh, and now your television is going to be delivered, um, will be extra, uh, there will be an extra fee, but it will be YouTube TV in which they'll be, um, they'll be broadcasting it through, and it depends on the package that you get, but of course, YouTube TV is television over the internet, right? And it, those right. of you who have YouTube TV, well, well, it's local broadcasting. It's just like your cable company, right? But it's not over cable. It's over. It's over the. You know, it's over the internet. Which, but does YouTube TV have like ABC, CBS, it, or they? It's, it's exactly. It's, you would not know the difference between a cable service and YouTube TV. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Wow, because I saw an advertiser twenty dollars a month. Good deal. I mean, if you can get that, and a lot of the, and that's how that's how these uh, uh, companies, the wireless companies, are um, are are broadcasting, uh, are, are offering this because they don't have to actually negotiate local services with all the different. Because the nice thing about YouTube TV is they have negotiated services with all the local programming, so. It doesn't matter where you are in the United States. You can get all your local programming on YouTube TV. It's just just like having a regular cable service in your area, right? 
And so, but it is coming in over the internet. So that's perfect for the, for the fixed base 5G is because when they want to add the, add the television service, they've already got a company that provides it. So that's how it works. Can I assume that the uh, fixed base 5G charge you the same price, no matter how many phones, just like no matter how many computers or TV? Yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to look at the, uh, you'd have to look at the, uh, I'm sure the terms of service are different with each company. Uh, the, the amount of internet coming in um, to your house um, is unlimited. In other words, there's no, I wouldn't, there's not a data cap. Uh, you're usually getting on the fixed base 5G now, you're usually getting around three to 500 megabits per, you know, downloads. So you're getting really pretty fast. That's going to go up dramatically uh, as we move forward. It, you know, we're, we're probably looking at five gigabit download easily and, and up even faster than that. So the speed will be fast. The, uh, the data will be unlimited. And um, you can, of course, plug as many computers or devices into that. It doesn't really matter. So that would all, it's, and again, you could use the existing, if you have a wireless system in your house, it would plug into the wireless system and you could use your existing wireless system. So that's, you could use your existing um, router. The only thing that you would need would be, and the company would provide you a cable modem. Did that, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I can't see, uh, Barry, can you see? I can't see if there's any other questions. Uh, let me see, on the chat board. Uh, no, I don't see anything else. You know, everybody, you'll get a kick out of this. Um, a while ago, I was researching um, all of these sites and, and looking through Google, I saw this fellow's name was, was uh, Ron Brown. And somebody said, well, you've got to get, you've got to get this. You've got to get Dr. Brown. Well, I thought it was coming in flavors of vanilla and black cherry because that's a soda I used to drink in Brooklyn. So I said, yeah, that's the Dr. Brown that I know. So no, this fellow is, is great. And uh, I think he's just proven it. So let's give him a, a great round of applause here. He certainly earned it. Uh, I put the link to Tech to Seniors on the chat board. And we encourage you to, to attend uh, the next Monday. What is it? Let's go through the time again, Ron, for those people be, who haven't been here. It will be Monday. It starts at the, the meeting opens at 830. And, we, um, and then we have a social chat till nine o'clock. Now we're talking about Pacific time. So you have to, uh, you have to adjust that whatever time zone you're in. There obviously would be a three hour difference with yours. Now, the other thing is, is that we're now getting a hundred, we have a license for Zoom. This is a Zoom meeting and um, we have a license for a hundred people. So it fills up quite quickly. We get a hundred people very quickly. And so if you can't get in, um, then we stream it out to YouTube. And the easiest way is just to go to tech. Did you put our tech for senior link in the, in the chat? Yes, I did. It's just www.tech4senior. Uh, and I will just here, let me just show you. Uh, if I can just share my screen again, I'll just. Um, sure, go ahead. Let me just. Uh, let me just, just do this here and I'll, um, I'll just share my screen. Not. And if you uh, if you look here, if we come over to our Tech for Senior website, which is just Tech for Senior, if you come to our uh, our website here, you'll see at the top of our website it says live stream. Click here, so you don't have to know anything about. You know, it all is. You, you don't have to log into a Zoom meeting or do anything. If you just click there, it will take you to our to our live streaming site where you can see the show on YouTube. Okay, it's live stream, and it's live streamed on YouTube. We don't start the streaming until about five minutes before the show starts. But here's the channel, and it would come up, and there would be a <clears throat> a button here that you would click or they're just, it would be right here and you'd see the live stream starting. And we don't right. start 
a live stream till about five to five to nine. So if you come yeah. here, nothing there, don't be worried. It, it will start about five to nine or when the meeting is full, when we get a hundred people, I start the live stream. So you will just, that's all you have to do is, is, is just come to the website, click there and it'll take you right to the live. Stream. <laughs> how, do, how do you get the link to participate in the meeting before the streaming, you know, before it's locked? Sure. If you want to do this, if you want to do the, um, if you, if you want to do the, um, the, um, the zoom meeting and have a little chat with us, You'll see on the top of the website, you see it says Tech for Seniors right here. Can you see my mouse there? It says Tech for Seniors. If yes. you click on that link, that's the, all the information is right there for you, okay? Gives you the Zoom meeting, it gives you the ID, it gives you the meeting number and everything like that. Okay? Great, thanks Ron. Okay, so it's all there for you and uh, there's no charge, anyone can come. Uh, you don't even have to be a senior, <laughs> you know, but it's, it is focused to, towards, uh, towards uh, stuff for seniors, but, but we have, um, we have a lot of fun. We have a, a, a good chat for the half hour before we then have an hour meeting and we have five, five contributors every week. Bob, of course, uh, does that. And, uh, and then we have at the end, we have a question and answer period afterwards for about 20 minutes. So it works out to about a two hour show. Okay, Ron, anybody else have anything to say to Ron before I move along?